Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. As the year comes to an end, the city is proud to be honored with several regional and national awards. The Mid-America Regional Council has recognized several city projects in this year's Sustainable Success Stories. These annual awards highlight a cross-section of sustainability efforts in the region. The city projects honored include the new streetscape on 20th Street, which added bike lanes, widened sidewalks, reduced vehicle lanes, and added other green infrastructure to improve bike and pedestrian access in the Crossroads District. The Ivanhoe Gateway Project helps increase home ownership for low-income residents, as well as tackling blight and environmental concerns, improving stormwater management, and adding green space. The KC Road Diet Initiative added bicycle facilities to roadways, including Berry Road and Gregory Boulevard. The KC Streetcar and Troost Avenue Streetscape projects were also recognized for their contributions to improving the quality of life for residents. Additionally, the Troost Avenue project added new curb extensions with bioretention gardens, a green center median for traffic calming, and a pedestrian walkway linking UMKC's Hospital Hill student apartments to the nearby medical campus. The weather outside has been pretty good, more delightful than frightful, but you know, it's always good to be prepared. If you want to learn more about snow policies, how to stay safe during cold weather, or even how to keep your pipes from freezing, just visit our website at kcmo.gov and search snow. There we have compiled frequently asked questions and much more information, including videos about snow phases and space heater safety tips. Remember that when it does snow, city crews start plowing when one inch or more of snow has fallen. Please wait to call the 311 Action Center about missed streets until 24 hours after the snowfall has ended. Now let's check in with our city departments. I think that the arts ecosystem of Kansas City is really exciting and important. There is a need to engage with the public with the arts. And to do that with both performing arts and with visual arts in such a way that is both inviting and accessible. It has taken what began in the crossroads as, a, as an idea with many local gallery owners, their own place to help encourage the arts within the Kansas City community. And the Downtown Council recognized that and chose to sort of make the effort to expand that beyond the crossroads and actually help reinvigorate the downtown core. The Art in the Loop is exposing so many different people or people maybe who have never been exposed to art of any kind to art in all kinds of interesting, weird, random places. Inside a library, outside on a street, in a streetcar, just so many unique places. It's really beautiful to watch people's faces when they came to pick up a book or they're rushing by because they're late and they stop. Uh, because of this performance, this art that's going on where they didn't expect. Sometimes they're not always, I don't think they're always planned events that you plan to go to, but sometimes what's beautiful about Art and Loop is that you forget that it's a planned event and then you happen upon it, and that's the beauty of being in the city. This year's theme for Art in the Loop and Art in the Line was connections, and we feel that uh, worked really closely with the streetcar because we are connecting people to places of work, shopping, entertainment, and we're connecting different neighborhoods downtown. It made our stops more beautiful. It made the experience for our riders more enjoyable. Whether it was music, um, performance, installations, I think it just added so much more to the streetcar ride experience. There's just something about trying to step outside of the studio, trying to step outside of the gallery, working um, in real space with real people. I think that that forces a certain amount of flexibility and improvisation and just critical thinking that is important for artists. And so we've seen it happen many times that the local artists are able to kind of get into the system and understand how the whole public art scene works and then they can then go after some of these bigger commissions. I think that this program is exceptionally valuable to the culture of Kansas City. Having so many local artists be able to contribute to the arts downtown and really drive people to come downtown to see something. I have been impressed by the amount of activity that's going on. There's a lot of collaboration between uh, dance and visual art and music. We're looking forward to what next year can bring and what additional ideas will come to the table. With the performances and installations, I mean, it totally blew our expectations away. All of the, the people in the community who care about art 
getting together to expose it to the people who may not even know about it. I just think the more that we can have collaborations and partnerships like Art in the Loop and the library and anybody else that wants to be a part of it, it's just going to make our community a better place. When you're on the accident scene, a lot of people are upset, they're nervous, they're anxious because of the situation they're in. But the way the law is set up and the way the police department and the tow lot work together is basically this. If you haven't called a tow truck to the scene, the police department will call a tow truck to the scene for you. We have a list of licensed, bonded, and insured tow truck companies, background checks on drivers, and flat rates on any tow that's done. So when we dispatch a tow truck to the scene, you're looking at a $265 tow to the city tow lot or a $265 tow to a location of the owner's choosing. And that's just so it's in the best interest of the owner. They have options to do what they need to do. There's a lot of random tow truck companies that are out there that are looking to make a fast buck and things like that. And we'll take advantage of people. And that's why we just would caution people to say, when you contract with a tow company, it's no different than hiring a roofer or a plumber for your home. Be aware of what's out there. If you're in an accident, police department's in a scene, say, I want a city tow. It's a set price for you. You can take it to wherever you want. You're protected. It's really in your best interest to do those types of things, just so you don't have to have the burden of trying to find someone. A lot of people do have someone that they can use, but just as a general, if you don't, just dispatch a city tow truck and we'll take care of the burden for you. There's a lot of companies that are just out there trying to solicit business from an accident scene. And when you do that, you never know who you're going to get. You don't know if they are insured. You don't know if they have the requirements that are in place to make sure that you're safe and sound. Not only that, there's no regulation on the price that they can charge you. Like I said before, if you dispatch a city tow truck to the scene and take care of it and bring it to your grandfather's garage or the city tow lot or whatever you choose, it's a flat rate $265. What you can get into, and oftentimes what I'll see on some of these tow bills is $1,100, $1,200, $1,300 for a tow, the same exact tow is a thousand dollars higher they're just taking advantage of people they're taking advantage of insurance companies because like I said people are on an accident scene they're upset they're shaking they're not thinking straight they're thinking these people are going to be in the best interest for them at the scene and they're simply not special day because we're strengthening the bond between some amazing partners, the CarMax Foundation, Cornerstones of Care, Kansas City Parks and, Parks and Rec, and Kaboom. So Kaboom is a national nonprofit dedicated to giving all kids the childhood they deserve, filled with balance and active play so they can thrive. This is the 2,851st playground since our inception in 1996. <laughs> We're so excited to partner with the Old Hyde Park neighborhood, the Kansas City Parks and Rec, with the Boom, with CarMax, and all of our volunteers that are here. Um, you know, at Cornerstones of Care, we know that play is important for the health and well-being of our children. And if our children are healthy and are feeling safe and, and, um, and loved and healthy and active, then our families are healthy and, and safe, and our communities and our neighborhoods will be stronger and thrive. So we're so thrilled to be a part of this today. Uh, thank you all for being here, and um, let's build a playground. Thanks to our partners, Hyde Park, Old Hyde Park, Cornerstones of Care, Kaboom, and of course CarMax. And I just learned that um, all the CarMax volunteers actually have to take a day off to do this. So wow, that's amazing. Thank you for coming out. Um, a lot of people look at this like we're just building a playground. I think we're building a community. And uh, the idea that the kids will have somewhere to gather, and the parents will have some opportunity to get to know each other just a little bit better. This is a very close, tight-knit neighborhood, but there's always an opportunity to build a community. So thank you, and uh, let's have a great day. 
one of the reasons uh, that we have so many people wearing CarMax blue shirts today is that our associates have told us that one of the things that they're passionate about is healthy living and supporting our communities. And no better way to do that than to give kids a place to play. Um, I know when I was a kid, that's all I did. I played outside. Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in today. And we need to do our part to encourage more kids to be healthy, be active. And this is a great way to do that. said earlier this morning that in true CarMax fashion we always have a little trick or surprise up our sleeve so Carol Grimaldi if you would uh, come up uh, I think you guys remember Carol is uh, from the Cornerstones of Care and uh, we got a little uh, surprise uh, for you uh, I think I also mentioned this morning that it's not just about the project today that we're gonna leave behind it's about building a relationship with the community so this is a big giant CarMax check. That is $10,000. All right, on the count of three, let's pretend to cut that ribbon. One, two, three. Blighted and abandoned properties are issues that communities across the country have had to deal with in recent years. Kansas City is not exempt from this issue, and its land bank program has implemented a number of creative strategies to reduce and repurpose these properties. When necessary, the city has demolished buildings that are beyond repair. The now vacant lots can then be reused in new, creative ways this is one of those creative uses. My name is Dre Taylor with Now Valley Aquaponics 100,000 pound food project. We'll do over 50,000 pounds of tilapia and over 70,000 pounds of vegetables here on 29th and Wild Bash in the third district of Kansas City, Missouri. This is bringing a lot of life into the neighborhood. It was some vacant lots previously, so we took those vacant lots and uh, transformed them to one of the most innovative urban farms, hopefully, in the country. We've been able to employ over 30 people and have over 500 people volunteer from across the metro to this project. And so I think it's one of the most diverse projects in Kansas City and it's bringing people together.
We have a free community garden outside of our fence. It's uh, four foot wide, 172 feet long. We have people come all throughout the uh, day and get free healthy vegetables. A lot of the times we don't see the people to come get it, so we're feeding people who won't even know. It's one of those things where we try to give back to the community. The land bank's been very important and very supportive of our projects here. Hopefully we can do some more with land bank and work with them and create a partnership. The Kansas City Land Bank is an agency of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. For additional information on this project or to view available properties, visit kcmolandbank.org. A new bond proposal from the city manager may be coming to the ballot in April 2017. The $800 million proposal would issue $40 million in bonds per year for 20 years. This money would go to repair, replace, rebuild, and maintain existing infrastructure. We'd like your input on the plan. Go to kcmomentum.org to review the plan and to let us know what you think. For residents in South KC, a new recycling center has been added. It's located at the KCATA Park and Ride stop at 5200 East Red Bridge Road, just off 71 Highway. Remember, aluminum cans, cardboard, and most plastics can always be recycled in your curbside bin but glass bottles and jars can only be recycled at city recycling centers or at one of the many private ripple glass drop-off locations around the city. In addition to that new recycling center on Red Bridge Road, the city's two other recycling centers are located at Metro North Mall, 400 Northwest Berry Road, and at the city's environmental campus at 4707 Duramus. The centers are open Wednesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For a list of accepted items, be sure to check our website at kcmo.gov and search Recycle. Having a holiday Christmas tree highlights the season for many, and the city makes it easy to recycle your tree after the holidays. You can recycle your natural Christmas tree for free at any one of the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers. You can go to 11660 North Main Street, 1815 North Chateau Trafficway, and 10301 Raytown Road on Saturdays through January 14th. All trees must be free of lights, tinsel, and other decorations, and proof of residency is required. Be sure to visit kcmo.gov and search Leaf and Brush for more information. For the weeks of December 26th and January 2nd, trash and recycling shifts to the holiday schedule, which is one day after your regular trash day. For example, residents whose regular trash day is on a Monday, you'll have your trash picked up on Tuesday and so on throughout the week. The week of December 26th is also a trash amnesty week. During this period, residents may set out more than two bags of trash without tags at the curb. But remember, no hazardous waste, bulky items, or leaf and brush will be accepted. And as always, recycling is unlimited. Also, we here at City Communications want to thank you for watching Channel 2 all year long. We hope you have a great holiday season and a happy new year. Please enjoy this video montage we've put together. It highlights many great events we've covered during the past year. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a happy new year. This week we are reporting from Union Station, where we are launching operations for the new Kansas City Streetcar. A huge grand opening ceremony celebrates years of construction and planning, and now the big day. So you've all heard that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one simple step. So today is that step. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to say at this very moment, it's time to ride KC. The city manager and other officials took the streetcar to head over to Commerce Tower to announce a new $139 million project 
It will add apartments, a new child care center, a bank, and a pharmacy to the building. It's part of a $1.7 billion in economic development projects downtown since voters approved the streetcar. The goal is to revitalize and repopulate this area um, to make it a more attractive environment for family. Bike boxes are used at intersections as a space for cyclists to wait in front of cars at a red light. Then proceed when the light turns green. celebrating brand new sidewalks. As you can see, the kids are already walking along the brand new sidewalks. These new crosswalks are being installed by our Public Works Department and they feature a large Casey moniker. They are the first of their kind in our city. The city is always looking for uh, different ways to uh, enhance the roadside environment and bring the motorist into connection with pedestrians and other users of the roadway such as cyclists. If you'd like a land bank house, you could go on our website at kcmolandbank.org. Uh, you'll find information there and you'll find online applications. 700 city employees represented the city of KCMO in this year's competition. The city team rocketed ahead from last year's 15th place final standing to finish in 8th place this year. I'm pleased to join you to announce that right here in Swope Park, the city of Kansas City, Missouri, in partnership with KC Pet Project, is proposing a new Kansas City, Missouri animal shelter to serve our city's residents and to improve the health and well-being of our pets. I am so excited about having Google Fiber in my home. For families here at West Bluff, the days when young folks had to research a paper using the Wi-Fi at McDonald's or apply for a job using a library computer are over.